multi-phase star rectifier. In the previous videos, we have studied single phase rectifier. Now we are going to study multi-phase rectifier. And we start with star rectifier. Uh, for multi-phase star rectifier, it can be represented by Q secondary coils starting from 1, 2, 3, 4 until Q. Everyone we have V1, V2, V3, V4, V until VQ. All of them have a big value, Vm, and they are sinusoidal function, sine omega t. But the phase of the first one is zero. The phase of the second one is 2 by over Q. The phase of the third one is uh, 2 multiplied by 2 by over Q and so on. So effectively, every arm of this star connection has a phase delay with respect to the previous one by 2 by over Q. Uh, if you are going to draw this, so assuming that the first one is V1 here. This B coming at this angle, for example. The following one, V2, will have a peak, the same peak, but delayed by phase equals 2 by over Q. So the difference between this angle and this angle is 2 by over Q. Then the third coil or the third secondary coil will introduce a voltage which has a big delayed from V2 by an angle 2 by over Q and so on. So this is the output of coil 1 of secondary coil 1 this is the output of secondary coil 2 this is the output of secondary coil 3 4 5 and until Q Right. Okay. All these coils are connected in a single node, which is the neutral. So the potential of the first coil is the potential with respect to the neutral or the connecting node. The potential of the second coil is the potential of the second coil with respect to the neutral and so on. Now assuming that all these coils or these secondary coils are connected with diodes in one direction like this diode 1, diode 2, diode 3 until diode Q. At this period we can note that the value of the voltage V1 is greater than V2 and greater than VQ and V1 here is greater than V5 and greater than V3 and greater than V4 so at this period, at the first period, from the angle equal 0 to the angle 2 by over Q, we can note that the voltage V1 is greater than 2, 3, 4, 5 until Q. This means that the diode D1 would be forward because the voltage here is greater than the voltage at this point. This would be forward. And because the voltage here is greater than this, the voltage at this point, this diode would be reverse because I'm going from the positive to the cathode here to the anode here. So if I'm going from 
the current from the first arm to the second arm, this diode will be turned off because it will be in the reverse direction. Also, this diode would be turned off because it would be in the reverse direction. All of these diodes will be uh, off because they will be in the reverse direction. Why? Because the voltage here is greater than the voltage here and the voltage here and the voltage here and so on. Right? So, at this period, when the voltage 1, V1 is greater than 2, 3, 4, 5 until Q, the diode 1 will be turned on and all the diodes or all the other diodes, D2, D3, D4, will be turned off. When diode 1 is turned on, the current or the forward current will pass from diode 1 to the load resistance to return back to the neutral line or the common node. So the complete circuit here now is actually coming from the first coil of the secondary to diode 1 to the load resistance and return back to the neutral to the first coil. Diode 1 will be turned on only at the period from 0 to 2 pi over Q, where Q is the number of the multiphase star. So, assuming that we have 6 uh, arms, so this would be 2 pi over 6. Okay. Now, after 2 pi over Q, until 4 by over Q, we find that the voltage V2 will be the maximum positive voltage, while all other voltage will be below the value of V2. In this case, the diode D2 will be turned on while all other diodes will be turned off. So, in this case, the current will pass through the secondary number 2 to diode, one, diode 2 to the load, returning back to the neutral and going to complete the circuit through uh, the secondary number 2. This occurs at the angle omega t from 2 pi over q to 4 pi over q. In the angle 4 pi over q to 6 pi over q, the voltage of the third secondary would be positive and greater than all other voltage of the other uh, coils. So, in this case, the current will pass through the coil 3 to diode 3 and all other diodes will be turned off from diode 3 to the load and returning back to the new and so on. So, the total output uh, voltage at the load in this case it would look like this actually uh, we have q parts of this two by this q parts each part is coming from one coil so the first part is coming from coil one at the range from zero to two by over q the second part is coming from coil 2 in the range from 2 by over Q to 4 by over Q. And the third part coming from the third coil in the range from 4 by over Q to 6 by over Q and so on. 
So this would be the output voltage of the multiphase star rectifier until we reach to two by. Then this would be repeated after two by exactly as the same. So we are going to repeat all uh, this waveform once again and again and again. So we have seen that the average output voltage that could be obtained from single phase uh, full wave rectifier is 0.6366 volt maximum or V maximum. Uh, this is the average DC voltage of the single phase full wave rectifier. Uh, effectively, this value is slightly small. So, by using multi phase rectifier, uh, we can improve this value. How comes? Actually, in the case of single phase rectifier, we have half cycle and another half cycle. So, we are going to take only two half cycles. But now, we are not going below the value of Vm by too much value. Uh, effectively, we start from a large value to V maximum to this large value once again. So, we don't reach to zero. This will make the average value of the voltage or the DC voltage or the effective DC voltage much greater than the case of the single phase. And we are going to calculate this. Uh, these rectifiers are used in application up to the power of level of 15 kilowatt. For large power, three phase and multi phase rectifiers are used. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the single phase, the single phase for wave rectifier can be used up to 15 kilowatt, but for larger power, three phase and multi phase rectifier are different. So, if we are using power greater than 15 kilowatt, it is preferred to use multi phase or three phase rectifier, right? Okay, now. We have already known the output voltage of the multi-phase rectifier. Let us now calculate uh, uh, the obtained DC voltage or the average voltage and the obtained root mean square voltage. And we can compare it with a single phase full wave rectifier, for example. For the case of the average voltage VDC, we can note that this waveform is repeated. So, we can take the average over just one small period here. This small period is coming from 0 to 2 pi over T. So, there is no need to take the average from 0 to 2 pi because actually this is repeated here. And the small period or the sub period is 2 by over 2. So we are going to calculate the average over the sub period, not all, not all, uh, not over all the bit. Maybe someone will ask uh, when we uh, were talking about the battery charger, we have taken the average over the complete period 2 by. Why? Because effectively uh, the bulk was only uh, located at the region from alpha to beta and it has not been repeated but now it is already repeated at each 2 by over q so we can take just only one sub pulse which has a period 2 by over q and take the average over this sub pulse right so, the uh, average value, the DC of voltage, VDC, would be 1 over 2 by over Q, multiplied by the area under this curve. The area under this curve is the integration from 0 to 2 by over Q of this function. This function is actually Vm sine omega t. 
اور وی ایم اکوزائن اومیگا تی اسیون زیاد اس کوزائن دونٹ وری ہیر ایکچولی اٹ از سائن بٹ وی ار گوئنگ ٹو اس کوزائن ایکچولی دا ڈیفرنس بٹوین سائن اینڈ کوزائن از دیٹ وی ہیو ا فیس شفٹ 90 ڈگری اور رائٹ وی کین نوٹ آلسو دیٹ دس فنکشن is symmetric so in a state of integration from 0 to 2 pi over q we can integrate from 0 to pi over q only half the period and multiply the integration by 2 so to obtain the integration under the curve I am not going to take the integration from 0 to 2 pi over q, but I am going to take the integration from 0 to pi over q. And we are assuming that the solder function instead of sine to be cosine, cosine omega t, d omega t, and with a big value vm. And because we are taking the integration over only half the sub period, we are going to multiply it by 2 because this is the integration of the half and the other integration is similar so we integrate over the half and multiply it by 2 so this would be q2 multiplied by the integration from 0 to pi over q or in other words it can be 1 multiplied by the integration over 0 to 2 pi over q both solution will be the same but actually this form is the form in the textbook okay all right so this was originally one over the period multiplied by the integration over all the period we replaced it by two multiplied by the integration over the half of the period over the value of the bit. So 2 over 2 by over q multiplied by the integration from 0 to by over q vm cosine omega t u omega t. Uh, the integration of the cosine is, uh, min, uh, is sine. Yeah, uh, the cosine, its integration is sine. Uh, so the upper limit would be sine by over q and the lower limit is 0, sine 0 is 0 so this would be simply 2 over pi over 2q this 2 can be eliminated by this 2 1 over pi over q multiplied by sine pi over q and here cosine omega t <coughs> yeah, sine pi over q and here 1 over pi over q it can be q over pi multiplied by vm this is the average voltage or the dc voltage if you are interested to obtain the root mean square voltage the root mean square voltage it would be the square root of the integration over the period 1 over 2 by over q multiplied by the integration over this period from 0 to 2 by over q of the square of the current or, or the square of the voltage the square of the voltage is vm squared cosine squared omega t d omega t and once again because the function is symmetric we are going to integrate over half the sub period so it will be from 0 to by over q and multiply the integration by 2 so the root mean square value is the root the square root of 2 over the period multiplied by the integration over the half of the period v squared dt or v omega t uh, cosine squared omega t or cosine x squared dx uh, uh, we can replace cosine squared by half multiplied by half cosine 2x and we integrate the half severity and the integrate 
uh, half cosine 2x separately and taking the limit from 0 to 2 pi so this would be uh, sorry from 0 to pi over 2 so this would be half multiplied by pi over 2 this is ah, uh, the half multiplied by 2 it would be 1 so we have 2 pi over q 2 pi over q and already we have half multiplied by 2 so this would be unity uh, omega t from pi over q to 0 could be pi over q uh, plus uh, the integration of uh, cosine to omega t it would be uh, sine omega t over 2 so this one over 2 sine omega t sine omega t sine by over q and sine 2 omega t so sine 2 by over q minus sine 0 minus sine 0 sine 0 is 0 so this is the integration we are going to take the root mean square so this is the root mean square of the volts uh, actually uh, if we say that we have a very large number for the star connection this means that the value of q is great or large value this means that the value of y over q is very small so in this case uh, sine small value is nearly the value itself so sine y over q is nearly y over q y over q multiplied by q over y it means that the dc voltage or the average voltage for multi-phase rectifier is nearly the big value directly uh, if we remember for the case of uh, single phase full wave rectifier it was 0.663 uh, 0.6366 of the V max here if Q is very large we can reach the value of Vm itself in a similar way the root mean square here assuming that uh, the value of Q is very large so y over Q is a small value y over Q is a small value so sine 2 by over q is nearly 2 by over q 2 by over q over 2 could be by over q by over q plus by over q could be 2 by over q 2 by over q multiplied by q over 2 by could be nearly unity so the root mean square is nearly the value of v maximum 2 this means that if i have multi-phase uh, star rectifier uh, the DC voltage and the root mean square voltage approach nearly the value of the peak voltage of uh, the secondary, which is Vm. Now, if uh, the load is purely resistive, the peak current would be the peak voltage over the resistance. So, the peak current Im or the peak current through the diode Im is Vm over the resistance and uh, effectively uh, the current would be vm sine omega t or cosine omega t over r so uh, if i'm interested in the root mean square of the current through any diode it would be uh, the current passing through the diode now uh, it should be uh, noted that the diode is turned on only in one period or in sub period and at the remaining sub periods it is off as i said here diode one would be turned only at the angle from zero to two by over q and then it will be turned off all the other periods until two by so if i'm talking about the current of a single diode it would be just turned on in one sub period and turn it off at the remaining bar so if i'm talking about the root mean square current 
I'm not talking about the integration over this subperiod. I'm talking about the integration over all the period. So it would be one over two by. But the limit of the integration would be from zero to two by over q. So when I'm talking about the root mean square current of the single diode of the diode itself, it would be one over two by. Multiplied by the integration over subperiod, subperiod is zero to two by over q, not the complete two by. Multiplied by i maximum squared cosine squared omega t d omega t. And because the function is symmetric uh, along the subperiod, we can integrate over the half subperiod from zero to by over q only and multiply by two. Take care here when I'm talking about the root mean square voltage of the load, the root mean square voltage of the load, I'm dividing by 1 over 2 by over Q. Why? Because this is repeated. But when I'm talking about the root mean square value of the diode current, I'm dividing by 1 over 2 by, not 1 over 2 by over Q. I'm dividing by all the values. But I'm integrating over the subperiod only. Why? Because the current passing through only the subperiod and is off along the remaining subperiods. But the root mean square voltage of the load is always available at all subperiods. That is the difference between here and here. Now we can make this integration. It is exactly similar like this. But the only difference is that we don't have a division by Q here. So it would be 1 over 2 by instead of Q over 2 by multiplied by pi over Q plus half psi 2 by over Q. All of them are to the power uh, half. Uh, which is actually uh, the root mean square voltage uh, over uh, the resistance for the single diode which is without Q okay without Q this is the root mean square value of the diode current of the transformer of the secondary current alright uh, this analysis is for general multi-phase star rectifier in the following video we are going to study specific uh, multi-phase star, uh, star rectifier when we are talking about three-phase star rectifier so in the case of three-phase the value of Q here it would be what it would be three it would be three yeah we have three yeah we have three let us see in the next video the three phase star rectifier.